everyone. My name is Dave Smith. Uh, I'm a developer advocate at Google on IoT platforms. Um, and I'd like to spend some time talking to you today about some of the developer platforms that we've been working on, specifically in the areas of IoT, um, and a little bit about the Google Assistant. So let's dive right into this. So computing has evolved over the years. We've gone from mainframes to desktops, laptops to phones. Every decade or so, we see sort of this major change in computing. And now we're seeing computers literally embedded into everything. Um, and while phones were a very large jump over PCs in terms of the number of devices in the market, we're expecting to see an upcoming wave of IoT devices with things literally everywhere. So we use the term ubiquitous computing to describe this. And it's this technology that's accessible to the user wherever they are and whenever they want it. And today, we're going to talk about some of the platforms that Google has been working on to support this particular effort. In the past, we've trained users to install individual separate apps on every siloed platform. But now, we have devices that are spanning all over people's lives. And some of these devices don't even have screens like we would traditionally use for a user interface in terms of a mobile application or a desktop application. So we need to think a little bit differently about what computing really means to these particular users. And we need to take their context into account in what we're building, their location, their physical activity, time of day, these types of things. So we need to start thinking about these individual apps as actually just individual views or unique surfaces into a single application or a single continuous or ubiquitous service that uh, can service across all of these different areas. We need to create a single seamless experience. So what I'd like to do is walk you through some of the developer platforms that we have here at Google to help enable your apps to span all of these surfaces. And I'd like to start with Android Things. So Android Things was recently denounced. We announced this as a developer preview back in December. Um, and it's Google's new platform to support development for IoT devices, and it's based on Android. One of the most important features of Android Things is the use of turnkey hardware through a system on module or SOM approach. And that's, you see some of them pictured here on the slide. The SOM contains a CPU, memory, wireless interfaces, all of the important electronics that are necessary with a common set of software. And these are modules that you can buy in bulk. They're very inexpensive. And you can plug them into your own custom boards, which can be manufactured at very low cost. This is all part of our effort to democratize hardware development for everyone, making it fun to prototype, but also making real possibilities for you to build commercially viable products. The SOM enables commercial hardware and some very important features. Android Things software is a variant of the Android OS that is optimized specifically for IoT. And we've added new APIs that are designed to help you integrate better with custom hardware. Beyond the device platform, it also includes secure and managed software updates direct from Google. These updates are managed using the Android Things console and are verified on device for enhanced security. We see many exciting benefits of the compute power that is possible in a device running something like Android Things. Computer vision, audio processing, machine learning, Computing power in these IoT devices is increasing every year, but at the same time, they're getting cheaper and much more power efficient. TensorFlow is one of the examples that we are seeing as one of these great new introductories into uh, IoT. TensorFlow has been ported to Android, and all kinds of hardware, such as Android Things, also supports this. We've built a sample that takes essentially a capture of various images such as dogs or cats or other types of breeds of animals and then allows the device to classify what those images are using a pre-trained TensorFlow model. So the training is done off the device, but the, the device application is able to process the image from the camera and determine what it is by locally running it through the pre-trained TensorFlow model. It doesn't need any cloud communication to do this. It does all of it locally on the device using those machine learning APIs. This is actually a sample that we've open sourced, and you can take a look for more information if you want to play around with this on your own. We also have this sample running as a demo in the sandbox in that little plastic Android head. So I encourage you to take that and play around with it as well. I'm not responsible for what it says when you point it at your friends. 
All right, so let's take a little minute to talk about the Google Assistant. The Google Assistant enables you to get things done with the power of conversation. It provides a new and exciting view into your app or service for users to explore. The Assistant is available on a wide variety of surfaces today, from the Google Home, wearables, phones, and the car, and we're working hard at adding it to even more surfaces over time. You can extend the Google Assistant as a developer to support conversations with your own apps using the Actions on Google platform. You can provide a, we provide a simple conversation API to give you raw strings from the user that you can use to then generate replies. This is an example of what we built as a conversation action around Google I.O. This is a very helpful API because you don't have to do the work of parsing voice input, dealing with text-to-speech. All of that can be handled for you through the Actions API. However, you are still responsible for interpreting what the user has said. And for a lot of developers, maybe you don't necessarily want to do that yourself. It's a fair amount of control if you need it, but sometimes there's a better way. So we have a great tool that is called API.ai that does a lot of this additional work for you. So if you haven't seen this before, I recommend that you check it out. API.ai uses machine learning to handle extracting entities out of sentences for you. It's much easier and more powerful than trying to write these regular expressions yourself. And it allows you to implement these conversational interfaces with ease. It's a graphical tool that allows you to specify these intents and entities for the data that you're really interested in out of these particular conversations. And you can see an example up here on the slide of kind of what this looks like with a sample that we built uh, for a recipe recommendation app. And essentially what you provide is you give the tool a list of phrases or sentences that you expect the user to say. And you can see that API.ai is automatically highlighting individual entities out of those elements that are actually interesting to your application. So for this case, it's a recipe recommendation. So we're looking for things like a protein, a temperature, a type of dish. Um, and all of these things are just recognized automatically by API.ai. Now, the other really nice thing about this tool is that you don't have to pick every single element that you, th you think the user might say. Because of the machine learning element to this system, you simply have to provide a number of samples up front, and then the system can interpolate and interpret what a user might say so that you only have to give it some initial data, and then API.ai will be able to always do the right thing, picking out all of the entities. And then your backend application simply has to respond to that structured data. So you no longer have to try and interpret out of a string the information that you need. We've also announced the Google Assistant SDK, which enables you to embed the Google Assistant directly into your own custom hardware projects. We provide out-of-the-box support for Linux and Android things, but the API is based on gRPC, so you could pretty much port it to anything. You can either use a button trigger to, to trigger the Assistant, or you can use a library that we have for hot wording support. You can trigger it just like we do with consumer devices. All you have to do is provide a microphone and a speaker, and then you can use the actions on Google to implement additional functionality, such as device control. The Google Assistant also supports home automation via the smart home system. Device makers can easily integrate existing devices with our home graph. The home graph knows the state of all connected devices so that when you ask it to dim the lights just a little bit, it knows how to do that in an intelligent way. The user makes queries to the Google Assistant, but, and then Smart Home makes calls to your cloud service to control those devices. As a device maker, you don't have to worry about handling all of that speech input, just dealing with simple structured requests with very specific values. The user speaks what they want, and Smart Home coordinates across all of their devices inside of the home, even across different device makers. Firebase also has an amazing suite of applications and services that are useful for IoT. Real-time database, for example, makes it easy to synchronize the state of various devices across a mobile app and between various IoT devices in your application. Authentication, as another example, enables you to associate devices with the user's account. 
And with Android Things, all of these features are even easier to integrate for IoT because you can use the same existing Android client libraries and SDKs right on those devices. We also announced Cloud IoT Core back at Google I.O. This is a fully managed service on the Google Cloud platform that enables you to securely connect millions of IoT devices directly to Google Cloud. Whether you want to connect million of devices and scale them automatically, you have no need to worry about provisioning infrastructure or adding individual redundancies. It has native support for standard protocols like MQTT, and you can access all of your data globally dispersed as one single system. It's very good for enterprise use cases where you need to do mass scale types of provisioning. This is sort of converse with the Firebase use case, which works very well for individual user type home use cases. You can use cloud services that are part of the cloud platform, such as BigQuery, to analyze your massive scale data and visualize that for internal use or for your users as well. So that's sort of a whirlwind tour of all the different services that we have available for IoT and the Google Assistant. I want you to be sure to play with all of the demos that we have in the IoT sandbox and the Assistant sandbox, and our team will be on hand to answer questions as well. Immediately following this session, I'm headed over to the IoT office hours for anyone who has additional questions about any of these platforms, and you can connect with me directly. Later on today, we also have hands-on training for Android Things, where you can actually get your hands on some of these devices and play with them and build an application. And we've got another one for the Google Assistant and Actions on Google tomorrow. So be sure to check those out. Oh, and one more thing. We want to get you started on the right path by building cool devices for IoT. So everyone who has attended this session today is going to go home with one of our NXP Pico developer kits for Android Things. Make sure you grab a card on your way out from one of the attendants, and you can pick up your kit downstairs. So thanks so much for your time, everyone, today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.